but she would weep before the Lord and pray over the city. Our precious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful again this morning that we can gather together in your presence to see all the needs, Lord, to see what everybody has a desire to have of you, Lord. Sickness in their body needs strength, Lord, to walk day by day, Lord. And you are the source, Lord, that are able to give us what we need in this hour. We praise you and we thank you for this service. May you bless our brother that's going to preach the word this morning. There's a great expectation in our hearts, Lord, because you are doing marvelous things in this hour, Lord. You're going to perfect your bride, Lord, and we are so thankful that we can be a part of it, Lord. May you bless this service. We put everything in your hands, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Good to be here this morning. I have to say, I think these have been some of the best meetings we've ever seen. It's such a joy to see people with free expressions on their face and to see that freedom. And you know, there might have been a little hiccup in the road, but that was all part of God's plan too. And I believe that was to show that there is a true unified ministry that's ready to stand and stop anything that comes against God's word. And I'm just very thankful to be here this morning. For a long time I travel Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy And said I sang low When I heard about Jesus What a wonderful out of prison that's taking its fire like the blind man of God lay back his side like a poor wretch a beggar that's found fortune and fame oh I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name From this world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved By His wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way like a bird out of prison Oh, that's taking its flight Like the blind man of God gave back his sight Like a poor wretched beggar That's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out His holy name Oh, thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. 
I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. Oh, I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Oh, thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. Oh, I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Well, Jesus said it is expedient for me to go away. Oh, but I'll send you another comforter to guide you from day to day. Oh, they tarry in Jerusalem for power from on high. Now that same spirit that Mary see lives in my heart of mine. Oh, I can feel His Holy Spirit a dwelling deep within. Oh, sometimes it, it feels so gentle, and sometimes I come out of rushing wind. Oh, that same Spirit, oh, that raised Jesus up from death and the grave now it shall raise this old body up and take me home someday oh they laid him in an empty tomb and rolled a big stone against the door will they put soldiers there to guard it you know they thought they'd done away with my lord but on that third day the stone was rolled away and it came forth from the grave oh that same spirit that raised jesus up will take me home someday oh i can feel this holy a dwelling deep within oh sometimes it it feels so gentle and sometimes like a mighty rushing wind oh that same spirit oh that raised jesus up from death and the grave oh it shall raise Oh, this old body up and take me home someday. Oh, they laid him in an empty tomb and rolled big stone against the door. Well, they put soldiers there to guard it. You know, they thought they'd done away with my Lord. But on that third day, a stone was rolled away and he came from the grave now that same spirit oh that raised Jesus up will take us home someday oh I can't feel this Holy Spirit a dwelling deep within oh sometimes it it feels so gentle oh I sometimes like a mighty rushing wind Oh, that same spirit, oh, that raised Jesus up will take us to the grave. Oh, it shall raise this whole body up and take me home someday. Oh, I can feel it, Holy Spirit, a dwelling deep within. Oh, sometimes it. It feels so gentle and sometimes like a mighty rushing wind. Spirit, oh, that raised Jesus up from death and the grave.
praise. Oh, it shall raise this whole body up and take me home someday. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated. the Lord. For two months, I've been in a deep, deep, dark depression. Couldn't do nothing but sleep. And my wife and my daughter got concerned about me about two weeks ago, and they made me call Brother Bud, he remembered. Uh, they thought I was finna cash out. Because <laughs> I told them I was sick and tired of this old world, and I really, I am sick and tired of it, but I wasn't thinking about hurting stuff like that. But they took it the wrong way, and they got scared. So they said, you gotta call Brother Bud. <laughs> they stood there in the living room while I called him and talked to him, and he confirmed that I was okay, and he just kind of gives it. Uh, he knew what I meant. He said, I'm tired of it too, Brother Phil. He said, well, we can't go until the Lord calls. <laughs> but he touched my body. He didn't only touch my knee a couple of months ago when the saints prayed, but he touched my body, and I have never felt better in my body than I have felt. Would the little sisters have a song? And how about Sister Melody after that? has 
and free to all mankind. He's coming back for a grateful people that will shine for all time. It's all ushered in singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, he reigns. He reigns. It's all ushered in singing glory, glory. sisters. And how about Sister Lori after that?
to be and the Lord is mercy on a hill called Calvary oh he cast in the sea all my used to be sister for that all right sister Lori and then how about brother David after that Sometimes I get so tangled up in those blessed pages How I'm gonna rest forever in the rock of ages How I'm gonna live and sing and shout a million years And hear him say you've made it home There's a crown of life and all your own So I think I'll read it again and then bless my soul Well, I think I'll read it again and see how I can fly Only one that predicts my future I think I read again and let it bless my soul Some read of how old Satan's days already have been numbered How one day in a darkened pit a thousand years he'll tumble But in another place there'll be a mighty celebration It's in the new Jerusalem we'll be rejoicing with the Lamb So I think I'll read again and let it bless my soul well, I think I'll read again and see how high I can fly. I think I'll read again of how my feet are going to rise. I think I'll read again this mighty book of Revelation. It's the only one that I know for certain. Only one that predicts my future. I think I'll read again and let it bless my soul. Now that's not all there's even more in those blessed pages Of how Satan and his wicked crowd will burn throughout the ages There's more good news I'm telling you, oh how I love to tell it We'll all go sailing into home to live forever with the Lord So I think I'll read again and let him bless my soul Well, I think I'll read again and see how high I can fly I think I'll read again of how my feet are going to rise. I think I'll read again this mighty book of Revelation. It's the only one that I know for certain. Only one that predicts my future. I think I'll read again and let bless my soul. Now that's not all. There's even more in those blessed pages. How Satan and his wicked crowd will burn throughout the ages. There's more good news, I'm telling you, oh, how I love to tell it. We'll all go sailing into home to live forever with the Lord. So I think I'll read again and let him bless my soul. Well, I think I'll read again of how my feet are I think I'll read again of how my feet are going to rise. I think I'll read again this mighty book of Revelation. It's the only one that I know for certain. Only one that predicts my future. I think I read again. Let it bless my soul. All right, you may be seated, Brother David. And then how about Sister Michelle and your daughters after that?
Are we happy to this morning? Like David said, this convention has been the best I have experienced I had for for many years. I want to come just a little testimony. Uh, we heard a lot of the good reports we had from Norway. That was on Friday night. But Thursday night, th the night before in the fellowship hall, uh, we was eating the supper. Uh, br uh, Brother Swain and Sister Selby just came down in front of me and I, uh, I said, uh, I asked them to sit by my table, but they sat with Brother Arne and Sister uh, Ruth instead. But that feeling I get inside of me was that I wanted to hug my brother so much. But the special thing was that the thought didn't come from here. It came from inside of me. So that made me to think perfect. And I wanted to hug him so much. But I did it the, the day after. It was so good. So that is the mind of Christ. We cannot separate our mind from our heart. They also have to work in harmony. And that makes, like Paul said, I don't want to know nothing but Jesus Christ. Christ. I'm not interested in your past your wrongs, I only interested to see Christ in you. Amen. Like I met you, Joel, every time I feel like electricity. Amen. It's so good to hug you, Joel, and it's so good to feel the love. Amen. What, what does that happen to me? I can see Christ in you, brother. You. Uh, that's so wonderful. Amen. I see Christ in your brothers and sisters. Amen. He preached about the Sodoma and uh, how the evil world is. And he read a scripture, only four words. It's learn of Lot's wife. You must take a decision in your heart. You cannot turn around back and, oh, just. You have to make a decision and cut all yes, the back hurts. Amen. amen, brother. I'm glad to be. You have treated me like uh, King uh, Steve Yards and Kevin. I'm happy for what you have done for us. D. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Where he leads me. I will follow where he leads me. I will follow where he leads me. I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Will none go with me? I still will follow. Will none go with me? I still will follow. Will none go with me? I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. With Christ before me, the world behind me. The Christ before me, the world behind me. The Christ before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Follow Jesus. 
No turning back, no turning back. Thank you, brother, for that. You may be seated. All right, Sister Michelle. Uh, how about the gospel ears after that? shiver in the cold but I did say you'd never walk through this world alone and I did say don't make this world your home find you in the night or that loneliness was something you'd never have to find but I did say I'd be right there by your side and I did say I'll
wouldn't see you as a fool. But I did say like me, you'll surely be despised. And I did say. The bitter kiss of death I have to walk through chilly Jordan To enter into rest But I did say I'd be waiting Right on the other side Yes, Lord And I did say I'll try every tear
Nos mi mi andele lo com mi estiri anta. En mi mi andele lo costian. Mi shiri ala le mo com ye le bi andesti andele le mo ni anta. En mi ti andele le mo constan ye estiri an. Ye estiri ele bi koshvi andele ne mo kon antia. Yea, my children, this morning. Surely I, the Lord God, would speak unto thee. Yea, once more, I have gathered thee, yea, together from around this world. And yea, I say unto thee, I have a table spread this morning, and the eagles have gathered together. Yea, there is put upon the table fresh manna, and as thou come together, feast thereupon, and when thou should leave this place, yea, in thy bellies shall be the bread of life. Yea, it shall enlighten the days ahead of thee, and thou shalt not be the same, for I, the Lord, God, I do lead a thee in the light. Yea, as I am in the light, I lead a thee by that in my spirit. So my people, I say unto thee, listen and take heed unto the words of my servant this morning. For I have inspired and I am an anointed him. Yea, to speak unto thee these things, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> All right, the gospel ears come on. You may be seated. I'm kind of homesick for a city to which I've never been before, no sacrifice. Yeah. 
You know, when uh, they were singing that song a while ago, the, the sisters, I was sitting there and the Lord was just, you could feel the spirit. And I wondered, can it get any better than this? And the answer came, yes, it can get better than this, and it will. Thank you all for that. Thank you each one of you for your songs. Let us all stand. I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen at this time. Thank you, Brother Bud. Appreciate each one of you being here this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you for another opportunity we have to be able to assemble here with your saints from around the world, these that have traveled so far, these that are near, Lord, we pray for each one. Pray that you would give each one understanding, Lord, of what is to be said. Lord, we just pray for guidance. Lord, and I pray for guidance into the things that I'm to say today. I need your leading. I need your spirit, Father. So may you help me to do my duty to get these things over in a way, in a manner that people can understand. Help us now, Lord, throughout this service. We thank you for your grace to us. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Feel okay? Good. Thank you, Brother Bud. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God is wonderful. I started on this subject uh, last Sunday, and this will be the fourth time that I've been on this. I got the title here, We're Approaching the End, because I'm not kidding. And I want you to know that I believe it and that I believe what I'm about to say, what I've said already. In the book of Haggai, The life scripture that I had, that I had Brother David put up this morning. This second chapter, the sixth verse. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. That is speaking of earthquakes. And I will shake the nations, and the desire of the nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The house hasn't been built yet. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine. Saith the Lord of hosts, China, you don't own it. <laughs> you got, you're just keeping it for future use. And it's not going to be used for you. They're buying up all the gold they can and 
then another country is buying up all the silver they can. So uh, let them buy. That just keeps it in a, in a safe place for God to use it to build His wonderful temple there in Jerusalem. These people want to say, well, it's going to be built beside the Mosque of Omar. That thing will be blown to smithereens. <laughs> God don't have his temple with idols. That's all it is. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. See, it's talking of this day that house that they were getting ready to build was uh, n nothing in comparison to the first one. But it, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. I was reading this this morning and I thought that I would use it to kind of build on what that I'm going to say. I, I know that uh, the anointing has to be here for the things to be understood and to be said in the rightful manner. And I kind of wait on that to... Uh, let the Lord have his way. Because I, I believe that the anointing breaks the yoke. And if you've got a problem today, uh, don't, don't leave it here. Leave it at Christ's feet, but don't leave it here. Because we don't need it. We praise the Lord this morning for His wonderful grace. I read uh, Leviticus, the 25th and 26th chapter. The 25th chapter was the chapter that uh, sets, sets up the holy days in Israel. And then the 26th chapter is a chapter that tells you what happens if if you don't observe these things. So I want to go back to Genesis 1, which is not up here. And I want to read verse 14. One verse. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. What have I read here? I have read a mouthful that has not been understood. It's something that we've read over uh, concerning what God put in the sky, the sun and the moon. And we just read over that and we don't get a whole lot, a whole lot out of it. But there's more to it. It's not really talking about the time of summer and winter. It's talking of something else. And we need to know what that is. Because we know what the signs, I've been over that. The signs is what that we have already seen part of and will finish up next year. 
That is a eclipse of the sun and eclipse of the moon. And it happens on four Jewish holidays. We've done had one. I mean the moon, but then the sun happens on holy days also. And it has to be at a certain time. So it's seasons. It's seasons in that that it has to do with time that God has designated. Because the earth rotates in a certain direction and and whenever uh, it comes down to the winter time, then the sun is farther away from the earth and it don't really shine on this part of the earth like it did in the summertime. In the winter it don't. So the seasons has nothing to do with this verse. As far as winter and summer and fall and all because it's the earth on its axis according to the sun but the moon has nothing to do with that. For signs what what would he what would he be talking about? If he wasn't talking about something that you're going to see in the heavens. And what would he be talking about? Seasons, because this is what we're looking at, the time, different times of the year of when that God is going to do something. That's your seasons. The seasons that he's speaking about don't just come every, every year. They're an appointed time. And we're living in those seasons of time of when that God is really beginning His move for the end time. I'm not here to tell you when the end is coming, but I'm here to tell you when it's close. And I'm going to do that. The Lord willing, I'm going to do that, and I don't care what the critics say, I've done got over that. They're going, to, they're going to say something. But I really, really, uh, they're just critics. They have nothing to do with the plan of God. Only thing they have to do with is rejection. And I don't like rejection. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it don't bother me, but I mean, if that's the way they want to go. Because it's their decision. It wasn't my decision because I had nothing to do with it. It is God's Word that is a divider. I'm not trying to divide. I wasn't trying to divide when I preached the third day. That wasn't my aim. My aim was to straighten something out. And as far as I'm concerned, it is straightened out because I haven't changed my mind. And I won't change my mind. When I, when I preached on the blood moons and there was a whole sermon preached against it. Not here. But there was. But I believe it. Amen. There's something to do. There's something in the air today. 
There's something in the plan of God that is working. And as I was reading those verses there from Leviticus 25 and 26, what I was reading those for is to show what happens when a nation turns away from God. This nation was raised up by God. This nation and Israel were the only ones because people fled here to get away from persecution. I'm not bragging about what's going on now. But I look back to our founders. They're trying to bring up all kinds of mud and, and murk and mar and everything they can to bring them down to the level of today which won't work. Look at the founders. Look at George Washington when he became president. He turned his presidency into a prayer meeting. Four hours he prayed for this nation. And four hours. And at the end of his prayer, he said, if this nation ever turns away from God, it, it will have its demise. How right. That he was. And those things that he's saying, as I preached the other day, I give you dates. I give you times and seasons of what has gone on in the last 100 years here in this nation. And the thing about it is, it all matches up with Leviticus 25 and 26. That's the reason I read that. I wasn't going back in history, and the thing about it is, whenever, uh, whenever Israel lost their first temple, when they lost their temple, it was the Syrians that come in, and, and the Syrians begin to mock and to say all of this, and Israel begin to say, we will build back better. Isaiah 9.10 We will do, do better. Let us, let us go there. Start at verse 8. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim, and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are falling. The bricks are falling down. But we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down. But we will change them into cedars. When 9-11 happened,
the buildings fell. The only thing that was left was a cross, a metal cross welded together by the heat. It stands up there now. And the only building that was left was St. Saint Paul's Church, which, Abra which George Washington prayed in. And what saved that was that sycamore tree because it kept, kept the Debras from hitting that building. But it cut the sycamore tree down. But this is all a defiance. We will build better. The day after 9-11, Tom Daschle, uh, the head of the Senate, gets up and he quotes this verse. The bricks are falling down. But we will build with hewn stones. The sycamore are, uh, are cut down. But we will change them into cedars. There's a, there's a stump up there. The roots of it and all. That was tore up out of the ground. It's up there and it's, it's got a plaque at it. It's a sycamore tree. That they found the roots of it. And all a little later. Tom Daschle didn't know what he was saying. But it was his demise. A little later, he was found in disgrace and had to resign. We will build better. Two to three years later, John Edwards, running for vice president, he quoted this same verse. Running for vice president, and, and he was found with this woman with child. And he had his demise. Two thousand nine, February, the President was making his his speech. He didn't read this verse, but he quoted it. February 2009. And they made a saying out of it and put it on a plaque at the top of the new building up there. It was on it was on Fox News along about April. There become in January a whistling sound come out of the of the new building. They don't know what it is, come from the foundation. So they decided we're going to build this taller than any building in the United States.
President shouldn't have said that. The ninth of Av, which is August. The very day, the ninth of Av, the Isis, head of Isis, said, We will have our flag flying in. Washington, D.C. on the Capitol. These things are all working according to the Word of God. The man that cut the head off of that woman this week, he was trying to convert people to ISIS. And whenever he was, then they fired him and he come back and killed this woman and attacked another one. I don't know what happened to her. Now then, they know they've already crossed the border from Mexico and they're near El, El Paso. But they said, we will ta attack all your little towns. They think they've got this thing haltered. <coughs> but the thing about it is, this nation has got to fall. It won't be... It won't, uh, it won't be necessary of something like that? 9-11, we had a great scare. Every mall was shut down the day of that. Green Tree Mall was shut down. Your airports were shut down. And the nation took a, a big hit. And then the 17th of September, which was Elul 29, then the, the greatest fall of the stock market that ever happened, happened that day. I went over that the other day. Some of you were not here. Seven, seven percentage points, that's a lot of money whenever you're looking at the stock market because there's trillions of dollars in it. 2008. Elul 29. Which was September the 29th. The the greatest fall then that had ever happened in this nation of the stock market. That's when Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and all those <coughs> economic giants had to be ba bailed out by money that we don't have. General Motors, other facilities had to be bailed out to keep them from going under. The next one, which these are every seven years to, to the date of a Lowell 29. The next one is September the 13th, next year, the day that the sun eclipses, which is a Jewish holiday. All of these are Jewish holidays that I'm going through. So, 
I'm not predicting, but the economists say that this nation economy is going to fall, of which that Brother Jackson went over. He said the fall will be the economy of all these nations. When the moon eclipsed, that is a sign to Israel. When the sun eclipsed, it is the demise of the nations. God said, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Israel. Could it be? Could it be that the stock market, that this nation goes under? If it's not, it's close. I'm not saying that it's going to be that day, but that day marks something. We're on the verge of the coming of the Lord. Two to three years from now, Israel is going to have her land back. That I say today. If you want, if you want to call that a prediction, that's what I predict. Because Israel's got to have her land back. And I read the other day where five will chase a hundred and that a hundred will chase 10,000. That's the way the war is going to be won because whenever, whenever Israel had the 67 war, this one man, which is, I didn't know his name, but this one man, which was an Arab, he was a little boy, six years old, living in the city of Jerusalem, and Jordan had an elite army. And he was watching some of this from his dad's window. But he sees the Jordan army, which was elite. He saw them running, not even with tanks. They got out of their tanks and run. He said, Daddy, I thought we were supposed to be going the other way. I thought we were supposed to be winning the war. Why are they running the other way? One place says five Jews left. They had a handful of bullets and then they were out. And here is, here is this Jordan army that has surrounded them and all at once... They all started running from these Jews and they captured one of them and said, what's wrong? Why is everybody running? He said, Abraham, Abraham. He saw a, a great big man standing there with his hands up and he recognized it to be Abraham because the Arabs do recognize Abraham because they know that's their dad. By Ishmael. Just don't be born of Ishmael. Because you're going to run. <laughs> Brother and sister, I want some place to hide. And according to the 26th chapter of the book of Isaiah, it said in that day that we will be placed away from all the trouble and all. That's got to be the rapture. I, I was going over this the other day from World War I, which happened in, which ended in 19 and 17. 
I took one leg of that, but there's another one that I want to look at today. That Samita year, somebody asked me about that. What is the Samita year? That is seven years. After six years, you have a year then of where that everything goes back to its to its owner. But then every 50 years, you have all the land goes back, everybody goes free. So 1917, World War I ended. Israel got a portion of land, as I went over the other day, by General Allenby. Then you go seven years later, which is 1924. There's not a whole lot of happening then. But you go seven years later, you come to 1931, the year of the Depression. All these rich people and all, they jumped out of windows. They kill themselves. Nineteen and thirty eight. Seven years later. Hitler declared that all Jews should be killed. We've been to the place, Brother Bud. Thank you, Brother. Brother Swain took us there. We saw the place where they housed 300,000 people in a little place of ground and in the room that they were in. A whole family was no bigger than this. All their belongings in there. It got so bad that the Jews would the, Jew, the, the Jews would look for the potato peelings. I heard one, one Jewish survivor of all of this. Last I know, he was still living, and he won't even throw a potato peeling away. Because he knows that's what he survived on. The potato peelings of the Germans. You are, here you are in a little parcel of ground that they give you, and they made the fence to look like tombstones. To remind the Jews, you're dead people. The Jews found a. They they would be some of those Polish people that would would house some of them, or, or not house them, but they would furnish them things until they run out of money, and then they'd turn them over to the German army. But there were Pol Polish people that were in this too. I was living in this time. Born in 1937. I always said the driftwood, I was part of the driftwood that come down the river and landed here. Just an old piece of driftwood. <laughs> but I'm glad that I landed here. I heard a message. I heard not only a message, I heard a truth. I got to see the working of the hand of God through a prophet to this age.
I saw the healing. I knew some of the men that were healed. Brother Branham looked back. He said to one man, said the blood is stopped. And I knew he was bleeding inside. It stopped. I saw a woman come up for prayer and she gets about halfway back in, in, the, in the church and he, he calls her out and said, you're healed. You sit back there behind that post. God has healed you. A woman laying on a stretcher on the platform tells a woman, get up. He didn't help her up. He said, get up or you'll die with that cancer. All of that. But that wasn't the message. That was the drawing card. Because that is not the third pull. The third pull was the message that he had. The seals. That was the third pull. He said, this is the third pull. Oh, it healed a lot of people. I mean, it's healing a lot of people. Not a lot of people right there was healed because he said, I could count on my hand, one hand, who got this message this morning. I'm glad I heard. I'm, I'm glad I wasn't the ones that he wasn't mentioning Oh, I'll be so glad when that third pull comes. I want to drive stakes for the tent. I want to drive the truck. There wasn't no truck. There wasn't no stakes. There wasn't no tent. But there was a message whenever... The last time I ever heard him was on, was on, uh, was on a hookup from Louisiana, or Louisiana. Like nobody knows how to pronounce Louisville. Is it Louisville, Louisville, or what? Some just call it the Ville. But that night that he preached on the wings of the snow white dove. He said, I'm healed. That dirty little varmint that went down his throat. He sees it come out. He said, I am healed because he said, next year is the time that this thing comes on me because it comes on me every seven years. He said, I prayed for many people that I was sicker than what they were. He pulled his sock off while he was hunting, showed Billy Paul, and it, it, he had hurt his ankle three months before that, and he still, it was still bruised. But the message, but the healing wasn't for him, he said. It was for the people. But brother or sister, that was just the message. The seals and all were just the beginning of something that was to last. Because the lady of sin church aid is dead. Your denominational world is dead and buried today. Amen. And you people that think that you're going to ride in on his coattail, you're dead. There's only one way that you can ride 
And there's only one way you're going to get out of here, and that is with the Lord Jesus Christ, because He is my Savior and yours too, being filled with the Holy Ghost and freedom. Nineteen thirty eight was the year that that Germany declared that the Jews should be killed. Why? Because they were Jews. Hitler started out as a Catholic. Catholics hate Jews. They said they kill the, uh, that the Jews killed our Lord. The Jews didn't kill our Lord. It was the Romans. They were the ones that they were the ones that pronounced judgment on him. But it was the Romans that killed him because the Jews didn't use crosses. They used stones. Let his blood be upon us and our children. And here they paid the price for years. The word Jew is a slang word. It's a byword of what God said they would be called. You'll just become a byword. And that's what it's become. Let me Jew you down. Shameful. Disgraceful. Here we're going seven years, 1945. You know what happened there? That's when the Japanese surrendered. That's when old Hirohito stood there on that ship with that general. He stood there and he, you could see the anger in his face. But he had to sign a treaty. First President Bush, him and his wife, went to Tokyo to where that was. And here he told was still living. And they were driving around and said, she said, what happened to that building? United States blew it up. Yeah, but this was the last war we would ever win. That's, as I said the other day, that's when the UN started. A lot of things started in 1945. Seven years and this is when the Jews were freed. Everybody ought to see this one time. It's still standing there as a reminder. Look at the dead bodies. <clears throat> Stacked up. Their toothpaste, their toothbrushes, their shoe polish piled in piles. It's still there. The little shoes of the little children and the sandals and all, room full of them. Suitcases and things of that nature in another room. Their hair from their head where it was shaved off is in another room, piled up in a pile. A big room. Don't you think they've suffered enough? This nation has got to be clean. This nation has got to go under enough to where that people are not going to be wanting to come here. Because there'll be nothing for them to come across the border for. 
then they'll be going home. That economy has got a tank. Just don't let yourself tank with it. As it's been preached in these messages already, as it's been preached, don't get your life wound up in a bunch of things. Sports. As I said the other day, if you want to watch a game, you watch it. I'm not saying that. But don't get tied up in it. You go down in Kentucky and probably up around Bloomington, either one, and there'd be people kill you if you, if you oppose their team. We bleed blue. <laughs> Don't get caught up in things. Because that is going to bring misery Heartache. Oh, I've got a beautiful car. I just shine that thing every day. I mean, I'm not talking about mine. You can see that I don't shine it every day. I got a good color of a car because it don't show dirt. I don't think they even make it anymore. Shame on them. Oh, that's, that's, that's so beautiful. That house, I just got to get up and look at it every morning. <laughs> My, what a beautiful thing. It's going to fall. <laughs> Provide yourself for your future. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Amen. No pain nor death can enter there. You, you may not have much, but if you got your health, you're in good shape. Amen. Ask somebody. Ask Sister Elner who can hardly get around. I was talking to somebody the other day when your little toe is hurt and your whole body hurts and Brother Kevin was talking about that. I hit mine against something and it turned, it turned black. I think I hobbled on the other leg. <laughs> it just does something to you. But we're headed home where there will be no more sorrow, no more pain. The former things are passed away. They're behind us. No more tears. No more dying. Hallelujah. Nineteen fifty-two, Eisenhower was elected president. He promised that the war, Korean War, would be over. Shortly after he was in office, the war come to an end. We're traveling on. We're going, we're, we're going one step at a time. Israel has always had to battle. 1956, they had a war. 
the little bitty nation there with hardly anything to fight is like going against somebody with an axe with a claw hammer. You come on down to 67. Here all these Arab nations come against Israel. Egypt, Nasser. It showed a little cartoon. Nasser poking at that hornet's nest. He said they're pesky little varmints, aren't they? <laughs> Israel, but God's grace, knew exactly what to do. Before Egypt could get their air force off the ground, Israel went in there. They didn't tear up their, their landing strip. They just, where there's a plane, there was a bomb. Didn't even get them off the ground. Nineteen and seventy-three. As I went over that the other day, when Goldie Mir knew that it was all over for Israel because they sneaked an attack on Yom Kippur when Israel was celebrating. It's celebrating their New Year's. They attacked them then. Here come the Egyptians. Here come the the Syrians, here come the Jordanians. Here they all come. We're going to get rid of them. And they sneaked an attack. We're going to drive them into the sea. They're still saying that today. And here are the United States is Really not doing anything to help them. They're more or less helping Iran. Do you hate your nation? No. But the thing about it is, it's got to change. If this is a place that Israel comes during the last half of the millennium, which I believe it is, it's got to change. Got to get somebody in there that will get rid of this Muslim mess. I said it. <laughs> President Obama don't want, don't want it said. He won't even say war. We're on a campaign. He's always campaigning. <laughs> Brother, sister, saints of God, we're not on a campaign. We're on a journey. And whatever force comes against us, we're well able to take, take that force. Samson did. I'm not talking about beating people. I'm talking about the powers of the enemy. We take the whole armor of God. If you take on the whole armor of God, nothing's going to penetrate it. Just be like a bee. Buzz, buzz, buzz around it. Nineteen eighty. Reagan is a, a elected president. Nineteen and eighty seven.
the month of Elul, 29. Stock, stock market falls. There have been five collapses in the last 40 years, all on a Jewish holiday, Elul 29. Five. Don't that say something about the seasons? 1994. Yeah, everybody remembers that. Don't you remember that? 1994 when, when the revival broke out. People received the Holy Ghost and that's what they called it. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah, we still call it the Holy Ghost. It's, it's good. Best thing you could ever get. Brother, I'm so glad to hear about you all <laughs> accepting the Lord and coming back home. I'm talking about coming back home. I'm talking about coming back to the Lord. Sister had a, had a prophecy given to her that she would walk away from the Lord, but in her latter years that she would come back. Is that right, sister? Hallelujah. Here she is! It's proof! Can't even talk about it without crying! Oh, I'm so happy this morning to know that God is real, that His Word is real. I'd jump if I could. <laughs> remember the meetings. I remember Brother David North coming up here and he falls right here. Lays there two hours. It done something for him. It'll do something for you, young people. You'll forget about a lot of things. I, I've met these young people during the meeting. They don't care to shake my hand. They'll reach over one another just to shake my hand. I'm nothing but God is everything. I want you to know that. Don't put your faith in me. Put your faith in God. I'm just a servant. I'm your servant. Jesus, just before he is crucified, he, he washed the disciples' dirty feet. It walked in a little bit of everything, manure and everything else on those streets. They didn't have the facilities we do today but in many ways is cleaner. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, amazing grace meant something to me for once. How sweet that sound. To save the wretch like me. The hardest thing we've got to we've got to do to find the Lord is to believe. Because he can be found. He's not hidden a corner someplace. To 2001, I'm about to run out of time. 2001. The 17th, the month of Elul. 29, which is September. The stock market crashed. People lost millions of dollars. 
2008, a little 29, September the 29th. The biggest crash ever. What will it be next year? I don't know. But it's September the 13th. I want to say something now. The plan is to go to Israel in March. We will have our, our spring meeting the last of June. Then you can bring your children. Because we don't know what will be by the, because as I said before September the 13th next year you have a partial eclipse of the sun which the Jews say is judgment to the world. March the 20th next year will be a total eclipse of the sun. Which is the starting of the Jewish year. They got two places they start because God designated this one. Actually, God designated this. He said this is the beginning of months for you. And seven months later, you, you have your blood moon. September the 28th of next year. You say, you're sticking your neck out when you're talking like that. That's all right. I don't know what's going to happen. I'll tell you that. But I don't believe we got more than two to three years left. It can't keep going. Because in 2000, 2016 will be a commemoration year of 100 years. Since World War One, two thousand sixteen and seventeen, I I told you at the beginning the dream that I had that Gabriel spoke to me. I believe this is what's going on. The dates, because I saw a lot of dates, but September. I, I didn't say September 1st, but I know it is. September the 23rd was mentioned to me. And whenever it was, the name Gabriel was mentioned, and I woke up immediately. That was, out of all the dates, that was the only one that I remembered. I don't know, I don't know what September the 23rd holds. But I believe it holds something. Are you happy today? On Lee believe. On Lee believe. All things are possible, only believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible, Lord, I believe. Raise your hands. Lord, I believe. 
Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Lord, I Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your wonderful grace and blessings upon your people. I praise you for my brothers and sisters. I praise you for what you're doing in our midst. And Lord, for my brothers and sisters, how thankful I was to hear what happened in Norway. Thank you, Father. These are my brothers and sisters that have drove halfway around the world or flew that far, Lord, to be here. Father, let them take something home with them. Here from the Philippines. God bless my brother and sister as they go back. Lord, they don't have a tale to tell, but a story to tell of the blessings of the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, I love you. I appreciate you. appreciate you being here at this time. And I know it's been said that it's been said that people come here and by a certain preacher, people come here and, and I know by the time they get to the end of the road down here, they're wondering why they even come. I don't believe that. I believe the ones that come here are here for a purpose. Amen. Brother Phil, you flew up here just to be in a weekend meeting. Here, this brother and sister come here for the weekend. So, uh, as the uh, old saying go down Kentucky, y'all come. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. Amen. I'm through for, for today. I don't know how long this will go on. But we'll see. It's a, it's a non-ending story. It don't end. It'll end with me saying what I've got to say, but it's a story that will go on. delegation (laughs) Um, sister Carrie Ingram handed me this card and she wanted me to give it to brother Bud to read and he's asked me to go ahead and read it and it says dear brothers and sisters thank you for the beautiful flowers cards and thank you so much for those who were able to make it to the funeral home. Most of all, thank you for your prayers, love, and support during the passing of my mother in Christian love, Brother Eddie, Sister Jan, and Sister Carrie. The family of Nellie Hilton thanks you for your kind expression of sympathy. So let's continue to remember Brother Eddie and the family in prayers. Sister Nellie, passed away I believe on the 23rd and many many years that sister came and was faithful 
and a believer. And God has taken her home, but we have that promise. We will see her again in a new body. And may the Lord bless the Helton family and, and help them through this time. May God bless you. Thank you, Brother Allen, for that wonderful message. I didn't have my glasses on. I put them in my case, and that's why I couldn't read it. Because <laughs> I can't see up close. I can see real far away, but I can't see up close. So... Uh, as Brother David comes to lead us in song, if you have a need for prayer and you want to come up, then come up. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross with the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain
naked cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. Oh, I will praise Him forever and ever. Oh, for the cross made the difference for me. Oh, and the old rugged cross made the difference. In a life bound for hurting and defeat. Oh, I Jesus. <laughs>
the disciples were getting concerned. The wind started violently blowing. Oh, but he was asleep in the sun. Oh, does he not care that we perish? We're helpless and we're so afraid. But Jesus arose when they called him. And he said to them, where's your faith? Because you prayed all night. Because you held on with all your might. Child, your cries have touched the master. you prayed all night, cause you held on with all your mind, child, your cries have touched the master, for he knows your voice, lift your hands, it's time to rejoice, child, your cries have touched. Well, it hits you without any warning The storm of your life had begun But seeing no hope in the distance You're frightened and nowhere to run By now your vessel is filling And you're thinking that you'll surely drown you cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you can't give up now, because you prayed all night, cause you held all with all your might, shout your cries, have time, the Master. For eyes have touched the master, for he knows your voice. Lift your hands, it's time to rejoice. Child, your cries have touched the master. Now it hits you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun, but seeing no hope in the distance, you're frightened and nowhere to run. By now your vessel is filling, and you're thinking that you'll surely drown. Oh, but you cried out for help from the Savior, and you know you can't give up now because you prayed all night. Cause you failed all with all your might. Child of Christ, have touched the master.
through. Oh, because you prayed all night, cause you fell along with all your might, shine the Christ and touch the Master. Child of Christ, have touched the Master. Now let's be more, 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 more like Jesus. Oh, let our lives so shine that all can see. Now let us bring our hearts and souls together And let us pray to you, Lord, by unity Oh, let's be more, 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 more like Jesus And let our lives so shine up and see Oh, let us bring our hearts and souls together And let us pray to you, Lord, for unity Now this that we live in is growing shorter and destruction seems to be ending. let us put our faith and hope in Jesus and not to all the likes of mortal man now let's be more, 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 more like Jesus let our lives so shine the Lord and see let us bring our hearts and souls together If your brother or sister falls beside you, don't walk off and leave them there to stay. Pick them up and point them all to Jesus, for He is the truth, the light, the way. Now let's be more, 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 more like Jesus. Oh, let our light so shine that all can see. Now there are churches around us that unite And their doctrines, they are not the same But unity belongs to only Those who believe in Jesus' name Now let's be more, 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 more like Jesus Oh, let our light so shine that all can see let us play our hearts and souls together And let us pray to God for unity Now in these last days that we're living Some will seek their own way and truth deny But God's chosen ones will walk together And they will function as a body unified Oh, let's be more, more, more We're living, some will seek their own way and truth tonight. But God's chosen ones will walk together and they will function as a body unified. Now let's be more, 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 more like Jesus. Oh, let our lives so shine that all may see. Oh, let us play our hearts and so together. Praise to God for 
more unity. Oh, let's be more, 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 more like Jesus. Oh, let our lives so shine and all thanks to you. There's your fivefold ministry right there. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, let's pray to God for unity. Oh, let's be more, 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 more like Jesus. Oh, let our lives so shine and all thanks to you. Oh, there. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. We, as the saints of God, are going home one of these days. Not very long off. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you think about that? Amen. Are you wanting to go home? Yes! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! This food is really good. <laughs> the food that we've had today is really good. natural food out back. <laughs> well, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your precious word and the revelation you have given us of your precious word. And we thank you for these meetings that you have blessed us with. Father, as we leave this church i pray that you will protect all of us and keep us safe and bring us back to the evening service and father we thank you for the food that you are have prepared for us out in the fellowship hall and we ask that you will bless and sanctify it all to our bodies for nourishment and we thank you for the sisters and the brothers that have prepared this meal and father we just ask your blessings upon your precious children and father we pray for the all of those who are sick and suffering of our brothers and sisters and we pray that you will grant your healing device to all of them according to your perfect will. And Father, we humbly ask all of these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.